giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Best of the West with eight events in the West this week. We've got a ton to get to in tonight's show. We'll re recap all of last week's action, take a look at the top 10 in the West this week, and look forward to the last week of pre-champs action here in the West. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Clint Ott. I'm Bryce Croucher. And I'm Aiden Ferrer. So we've got a lot to action to get to, like I said, so we'll get right to it here with the Idaho Regional. With only 27 teams competing, the Idaho Regional was one of the smaller events in the West all year. After each team was able to get a full 12 matches in, it was the PNW power of 1983 Skunk Works that was able to take the top spot. Somewhat surprisingly to some, they picked up local 21 and 6680 Triobotics. With not a single match upset in the tournament through quarters or semis it was the number one alliance against the second alliance of 3647 the millennium falcons 5012 griffin gear and 1566 the ammo knights the finals went blue red blue and the second alliance was able to walk away victorious congratulations to them also and also congratulations to the rookie all-star winners 7895 the trobots engineering inspiration award winners 6237 Martin Motion and 3794 Tech Millennial Win T on the Regional Chairman's Award. Um, Idaho event was uh, kind of a quiet one. 27 teams competing, not a whole lot of action there. After a top seeded performance in week three at San Francisco, 971 was clearly the favorite heading into this weekend's Utah Regional. After 10 rounds of qualification matches, however, it was 3478 Lambot out of Mexico who was able to take the top spot. With their first pick, they grabbed 971 Spartan Robotics and picked up 4738 to round out the alliance. They worked through quarterfinals in two matches and semis in three, but in the finals, they met up against 5933 Judgment Call, 1700 Gator Botics, and 4068 Bear Botics, and eventually called in 3243 the Ampires. The finals would go a full three matches after the second alliance took the first, but the top seeds were able to complete the comeback, winning the event. 3478 was able to close out the gold gold clingling with the regional chairman's award gaining their third and fourth banners of the season. So well done by Lambot. Congratulations go to them as well as to 3374 Jackson Holt Robo Bronx on the Engineering Inspiration Award and 7906, the underdogs, on the Rookie All-Star Award. Aiden, what went down out at the Hawaii Regional? Yeah, moving away from the mainland now, out in the Pacific, on Honolulu to be specific, 34 teams from across Hawaii, Taipei, China, and Japan gathered at the Stan Sheriff Center in a battle for the islands. This Week 5 event had an odd combination of teams competing for the first time, like 6909 Sakura Tempesta, going up against the likes of 359 Hawaiian kids who were attending their third regional this season. And they're not even done yet. They still have another regional this weekend. With each team playing 12 matches, the rankings were sure to settle in proper fashion. 368 Kikamana came out on top with a ranking average of 2.75, just coming out above 359 Hawaiian kids by 0 .09 ranking average. In third was 4253 Raid Zero from Taipei, looking to prove their mettle after an unusually middle-of-the-pack run for them at the Southern Cross Regional a few weeks ago. Kikamana chose to keep the Hawaiian powerhouse Ohana together, taking 359 along for the Elims ride and picking up 5515 Blue Power Robotics for their third. 4253, meanwhile, chose 2443 Blue Thunder from Kahului 
and 2441 Spartex from Honolulu for their run through the bracket. Though several of the quarterfinal sets went to three matches, nobody was able to best the number one and two alliances finals. The number one alliance dominated this set with some help from foul points, winning over the second alliance 79 to 55 and 83 to 58. Congrats to Kikamana and Blue Power Robotics on their first Blue Banners of the season, as well as Hawaiian kids on their second. With Raid Zero's chairman's win at Southern Cross, however, all teams in the finals were able to qualify for their respective championships. Shoutouts go to 77-24 Molokai Robotics on their Rookie All-Star, 24-38 Iobotics on their Engineering Inspiration Award, and a huge omedito to 6909 Sakura Tempesta from Chiba, Japan on their chairman's win. Moving back into the mainland, though, in California, 59 teams packed into San Jose State's event center the past few days, competing in the 21st Silicon Valley Regional. The 19th Silicon Valley Regional, if you want to get technical about things. Though the event may have seen the absence of a few strong local teams, there was still plenty of actions with 254 the Cheesy Poofs, 649 Mset Fish, 846 the Funky Monkeys, and 1868 Space Cookies vying for the top spots. As the day progressed, it was evident that 649 was one of the best game piece scorers at the event, though 846 and 254 were neck and neck for first place. Due to some incomplete rockets and missed climbs, the poof slipped in the rankings and fell two points behind 846, despite being the only undefeated team at the event. In rank 1, nine, taking 840 Art as their defender. To even out the primates on the playing field, 254 went with 5499, the Bay Orangutans, and chose one of SVR's historically best performing teams, 6418, the Misfits, as their third. In rank three, 1868 Space Cookies picked up Team 8, Pally Robotics, and 4990, Griffin Robotics, while 604 constructed a fourth alliance of 972 Iron Claw and 7308 Deep Vision. Quarterfinals seemed pretty standard, but the semifinals saw an upset between the number one and four alliances. 846 and 649 had been able to blow through the qualification rounds with little trouble. 604 had a strong set of partners who handily danced around the defense from 840, firing back with hard hits from 7308 against the two Titans. The artful monkey fish lost to quick iron vision, 51 to 70 and 67 to 85. The finals saw the poofs showing their true blue colors representing number two alliance now facing off against the red alliance number four. In only two matches, this bay encapsulating alliance beat the Silicon Valley-centric trio 62-73 in match 1 and 60-95 in match 2. Congrats to 254 for maintaining their SVR win streak, 54-99 for getting the gold after their silver medals at SF outfits for their first blue banner. Though uh, through the double pre-qualifications on the winning alliance after SFR and 604's RCA at the same event, both 972 Iron Claw and 7308 Deep Vision qualified with wild cards in hand. On the awards front, the cute and cuddly 76-67 Otterbots from Napa took home the Rookie All-Star Award. 649 MSET Fish won EI, and 2220 Blue Twilight from Minnesota took home the Blue Banner for Chairmans. Congrats to all these teams at yet another successful SVR. SVR is one of those events, you know, you look forward to all year long. It was not uh, the typical powerhouse event this year, but definitely a good one to watch still. Uh, over a little bit to the west, or east, and mostly south at the Thomas & Mack Center, they welcomed 44 great teams to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada for the Las Vegas Regional this past weekend, in an event where over 20% of the competing teams were rookies. The eyes stayed at the top of the team list to see who would come out on top. At 11-0 through Qualls, it was Hall of Fame 987, the high rollers who were able to secure the top seed, picking up second-ranked Hall of Fame team 842, Falcon Robotics, and local rookie 7425 Green Valley Robotics to round out their alliance. The Hall of Fame alliance was able to work through their quarterfinals and semifinals with few issues. The other side of the bracket was filled with a bit more drama. After declining 1197, the Torbot's invitation to join the second alliance, 3309 and their third alliance met up against number two in the semis. It looked like it might have been a mistake declining after the second alliance came out on top of the first match of the series. The third alliance captain by the Friarbots with rookie partner 7426 pair of dice robotics and second year team 6825 the Stronghorns were able to take the second and third semifinal matches and move into the finals against the top seed. The finals were a classic example of deep space with solid defense on both sides provided by 7425 and 6825 for both red and blue respectively. 
With about 45 seconds left in finals one, 842 of the Red Alliance died, leaving the door open for Blue to take the first match, 89 to 84. The number one alliance was able to stay at full strength for the next match and set a penalty-free high score for the event at 101 to 60. They continued to press their momentum for the comeback, winning a close finals three match, 89 to 77, to take the tournament. Congratulations to 987, 842, and 7425, as well as regional chairman's award winner 2485, the Warlords, engineer inspiration winner 6950, their second season and rookie all-stars 7567 octopus out of brazil muted. oh i was muted ah oh. yeah come on dude, dude. P- pulling a clint this is the, <laughs> this is the fifth week of the season man. oh come man on. just a rookie out here man all right well ventura saw some hard hitters among the 42 teams at the regional Teams like 115 MVRT, 294 Beach Cities Robotics, 4414 High Tide, 5199 Robot Dolphins from Outer Space, 5700 Soda Cyber Dragons, and 5818 Riviera Robotics, all fighting for their second shots at glory. 50 having just won LA the week before, after their 12 qualification rounds, the Robot Dolphins took the first seed yet again, tied in ranking score with 4414 at 2.83 average but a mere 18 cargo points ahead, which made the tiebreaker. Regardless of what separated them, the Dolphins decided to stick with the Tide. A strong first and second seed partnership eventually settled on 69-34 Scorps to partner up. 294 Beach Cities Robotics opted to take 114 Eagle Strike along with them, as well as rookie 7887 Final Frontier. These two alliances swept their way through quarters like a tidal wave, but 294's alliance started running into hiccups in semi after 599 Robodox, 5818 Riviera, and 4470 Thai Gears barely pulled off a one point lead in semis, too. The Eagles of the Beach Frontier turned things around, winning by two points in the third match and moving on to finals. Though the first match unsurprisingly went in favor of the number one alliance, winning 100 to 70, a substitution was called by 294 to replace 7887 with 7650 Monte, Montepaki's Robotics, all the way from Switzerland. The Swiss brought newfound strength to the second alliance, taking finals two, 79 to 72 over number one. The number one alliance did, in fact, win the set with scores of 66 to 59. Congrats to 5199 and 4414 on their second banners and to 6934 for the first win in only their second year. With wild cards and pre-qualifications, 294, 114, and 7887 were all invited to attend the world championships. Looks like one of those four teams didn't make the wild card cut on paper, but they got something even better. 7650, the substitute for the second alliance, won rookie all star. Huge props to all these teams, as well as 2486 Coconuts from Flagstaff, Arizona on their EI win, and 4201 Vitruvian Bots on their second Chairman's Award win. Well, let's we'll pass things up to the Pacific Northwest. We haven't heard too much recently. What was going on? It was a little quiet up there this weekend. Yeah, so uh, Lake Oswego District event was a little quiet compared to previous weeks, but it was a blast for me. And qualification rounds showed some strategic gameplay that we rarely get to see. And uh, there were several Rocket RP, unfortunately. Those Rocket RP were all from penalties, but nonetheless, at the end of the matches, it was one of the event favorites, 4488 Shockwave, who ended up at the top seat. With first pick came no surprise, as it was also 1540's first pick way back in week two, 4043 the Nerd Herd. It was fairly un- it fair- was fairly surprising, however, at least to me, that the second seed, 3674 the Clover Boss, sent their- spent their first pick to pick up 2471 Team Mean Machine, who struggled from growing pains in the early qual rounds due to major robot changes. It was these two alliances with their second picks, 4110 Deep Space Niners and 5198 Night Tech, respectively, who made it to the finals after a single loss each in the semis. The finals were a grueling and intense set of three matches, but it would home the gold, with scores of 65 to 69, 80 to 79, and 73 to 63. Huge congrats uh, to the winning alliance, as well as 2471 Team Mean Machine on the Chairman's Award and their gold silver cling bling. 997 Spartan Robotics also deserves big congratulations for engineering inspiration. Uh, later on in the weekend, the Auburn District event was 
the third time this season. 2046, Bear Metal took the top seed after 68 qual matches. With their first pick, they took the second ranked team, 2990, and rounded up the alliance with 4579, the Robo Eagles. The number one alliance comfortably won their first quarterfinals in two matches, holding their opponents to under 60 points in both matches after 4579 was able to play solid defense. In the first semifinal, 4579 was deemed to have been strategically tipped a G19 infraction, and the fifth alliance was given a red card. The number one alliance was able to win the second match with all three robots at full strength and move on to the finals, where they faced the number three alliance of 4089 Stealth Robotics, 4911 the Cyber Knights, 6503 Iron Dragon, and after finals won, 2929 the Jaggerbots. Again, the solid defense provided by 4579 was able to hold the number three alliance to under 60 points in both finals matches as the scoring power of 2046 and 20 well over the top 91 to 59 and 94 to 58 congratulations to the number one alliance as well as the district chairman's award winners 3786 the chargers and district engineering inspiration award winners 2980 the whidbey island wildcats all right, so eight events in the West this past week. Uh, absolutely insane amount of action. After all that, we've got the top 10 teams in the West. Uh, kind of a few surprises here after you know watching the actual action. But um, I guess unsurprising, number one goes to the Cheesy Poofs, um, who despite fighting some issues in... Um, Quite a few of their qualification matches were still able to take out the SVR win. Uh, team 971 able to take the second spot. 987 the High Rollers taking the third spot. 842 Falcon Robotics out of Arizona taking the fourth. 3647 the Millennium Falcons number five. 359 the Hawaiian Kids after their win at Hawaii. 4414 High Tide taking number seven. 2046 Bare Metal in eight. 3309 in nine and 604 rounds out the top 10. So guys, uh, any surprises here? Um, I ask you every week. Yeah, this is loads of surprises actually. Like where's 5012 on this list? Where's 649? Where's Lambot? Like Lambot outranked 971 and then picked well, up and went on to win and got Lambot, like Lambot will would be technically in, in the Mexico top 10. This is top 10. Mm, that's fair enough. Yeah. From the West. Oh, but I top. agree. There's like a lot of players on this list. I'm, I'm not 100% sure to deserve to be here. Like, get yeah, great, great work from quite a few teams here. But, um, you know. Yeah, those teams are really good. But, like, I'm still surprised 649 didn't make top 10 because I don't think people realize SVR was an arms race for 649. It wasn't a matter of of like who ranks first it's a matter of who ranks first in order to pick this team because that was well what everyone thought was going to be the winning alliance right the first one to get m set they're absolutely crazy out on the field um they're going to dominate at worlds i strongly believe so to see them not in the top 10 i think they're maybe like 11th or 12th it's a bummer but they should have gotten more votes i think yeah yeah i mean sure. also with with eight you know, eight events in the West, West and still only 10 spots. It, it, I guess somebody's definitely going to get left out of this list. Um, kind of surprised to see 3309 in the top 10. Um, they fought issues throughout the qual matches this weekend. Did make the finals, though, at Las Vegas and took the number one alliance to three matches. So, I mean, maybe they deserve all up yeah. to it's all up to the people, right? I definitely think that these uh, results show you. You know what kind of matches people watch when there's just so many things that they can choose from, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the big events, it's the uh, playoff rounds that are waiting heavily, and so yeah. I don't think there's really a lot of surprises for me. I find it a little bit sad that we didn't get to see some of our short PNW power robots like uh, 4043 and 2990 on this list, but at the same time, I understand why it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah for sure, definitely uh, elimination performance outweighing. Uh, Qualification performance for sure. Not even Elims like finals specifically. True, true. I mean, I think I think a lot of our voters actually just look at TBA and then see who wins. Yeah, who's in the final. <laughs> we'll, we'll Throw them on. Uh, yeah, like 846 rank number one, not even on this list. 649 yeah. first pick of them, like rank number three, not even on this list. Yeah, uh, yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. All right. Um, so you know, 
week five was very stacked for us. Week six, less so, but week six is the last week of qualification in the West as uh, all of our teams go to Houston to compete in what would be, I guess, week eight. Um, so we'll get one week off after after this coming week. What do you guys kind of expect moving into the final week of qualification? Yeah, I'd say uh, we're going to see a continuation of the improvement of gameplay throughout qualifications and playoffs. I think that people are definitely starting to figure out that if you want to get picked for the playoffs and you're not a top scorer, that you got to show off some defense in the quals. And uh, it's taken a while, but I think it definitely helps this game out and makes the quals more exciting. It also makes it easier for scouts to do their jobs. Um, and because of this, I'm not sure that we're going to see a huge increase in Rocket ranking points, but we might see a few worked out might see some teams getting a rocket because the other alliance doesn't expect them to get a rocket. But I don't think we're going to see a widespread wave of rocket RPs coming up this week. Even with DCMP, you don't think we'll see a bunch of, a bunch of rocket RPs? I think, uh, you know, I, we'll see some teams where two robots can work together. Maybe one pushes defense out of the way or one gets the score. But it's a real tough strategy to pull off, and I'm not sure that the ratio of good uh, rocket bots under defense to the ratio of good defense bots is going to work out in that favor. Hmm. All right. Um, so I guess without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our final week of qualification. Bryce, why don't you start us off with the premier event of the weekend the Pacific Northwest District Championship. For sure. It's a good segue, and it's the premier event for the PNW year up here. Uh, it's finally about time for the event everyone's been waiting for, and there's a ton of excitement going into the event for a variety of reasons, so let's take a look at what the hubbub is all about. One thing many of us are pumped about is that the game will be played differently than at any of the district events, with the number of strong tall bots looking to fill the rocket, lots of powerful defense bots, and a plethora of incredible cyclers that will be practiced under defense at this point. It's anyone's guess what strategies will reign supreme in the quals and in the playoffs. This week will also be the first time that we get to see the Giants of this year's lineup, 2046 Bear Metal and 2910 Jack and the Bot, play face to face. This is sure to be the favorite pairing going into the event, but the qual schedule can be a cruel mistress. And at this level of play, we'll see that it's definitely anyone's game. With the spread, widespread availability of local events in the district system, this will also be the first time since last year that we get to see a lot of Washington teams and Oregon teams duke it out on the field. With this, we'll get to see a continuation of many great stories from last year's epic clash, such as will 2910 Jack and the Bot see their first district champs victory after an incredible breakout season last year and an Einstein finals appearance? Will this last year's finalists at district champs, 2046 Bare Metal, 1425 Error Code Zero, and 6445 C-Tech get the redemption they've been waiting all year for? Or will 2471 Team Mean Machine uh, defend the two-time title or be overshadowed by their performance last year. After their strong qualifying performances, we could see 2990 Hotwire or 4043 Nerd Herd continue their steep ascent and achieve a breakout season on the level of Jack and the Bots last year. We also might see 1983 Skunkworks Robotics Meteoric Rise from the Ashes be capped up from uh, be capped off by a third district champs win. Unfortunately, I don't have the answers to any of these questions, so you'll just have to to tune in this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to find out for yourselves. So what's going on up in the Canadian Rockies? Oh, Clint, what a Clint. <laughs> I, after getting on Aiden about it, of course yeah. I go. Of course. It's inevitable. All right. So uh, up in beautiful Calgary, Alberta, we've got 36 teams competing at the Genesis Center this weekend. Uh, coming in for their fourth Regional event this season, Team 359, the Hawaiian Kids, were a late add to this event. After winning last weekend at the Hawaii Regional and one other time this season, they'll be looking like a favorite for sure. And while the Hawaiian Kids may have four events coming in, or com coming in for their fourth event, Team Spider, 
Team 1622 has already competed at four regional events and will oh com- be competing goodness. at their fifth regional this weekend. Um, after a slow start to the season, Team 2122 Team Taters was able to ratchet things up a little bit this past weekend where they showed great improvement and finished as finalists. Um, they usually work, you know, continue to work after their events to get better. So I'm looking to see them continue to improve for this event as well. Team 4334 local team, Alberta Tech Alliance, is probably the team that's got the best shot to make it deep from Canada after falling to 359 in the semis as the captain of the number four alliance at the Canadian Pacific Regional in week two. They'll be looking to for some vengeance while they try to pick up their first banner of the season. Um, yeah, just moving Aiden, on down California, what? I guess. Like, we only got one event, right? <laughs> one <Yeah>. more? <laughs> well, Aerospace Regional, uh, I believe this is the second year we've seen this. Uh, there's only 38 teams there, but the top's looking pretty darn heavy, if you ask me. We got teams like 399 Eagle Robotics, 1538 The Holy Cows, uh, 1678 Citrus Circuits, 2073 Eagle Force, 2659 The Robo Warriors, 3476 Code Orange, and 5012 Griffin Gear. All these teams have done amazing this season, and here they are trying to get their last bids in for championships, if not more banners for some of them. Um, there's lots of legendary partnerships here, actually, with 1678. Uh, Holy Cows, I believe they took Vegas together in 2017. 1678 won champs with 5012. We've seen 1678 and 2073 play a lot of the same events in the past with uh, events like Davis and Capital City Classic. So they know each other, um, probably able to read each other like a book at this point. So Griffin Gear is probably one of the biggest threats otherwise coming in after their dominant performance last week in Idaho, though. Like, I'm... I love Citrus, but I'm watching Griffin Gear this event. I'm really excited to see how they do. Yeah, definitely. They stepped it up last weekend. Um, I And uh, I think, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to anybody at this point to see them and Citrus get together to to take that event. Um, real quick here before we wrap things up, got a, the Arizona West Regional as well. Uh, after winning the Arizona North Regional, Team 2478 looks to continue their undefeated season. They got picked up by Team 118 to take that event in Week 2. They'll definitely come back with even more power after a few weeks off. Team 2403, Plasma Robotics, was able to show well at Arizona West as well. Um, Looking for them to continue to improve their cargo and hatch panel game and make a deep run this weekend. Um, Another team I think has a good shot to make it deep uh, would be the Bid Buckets at an event where I don't see... uh, a lot of scoring needed outside of the low, like cargo, low rocket area. I think the bit buckets have a great shot to make it deep as well. So that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all we ask is you let others know about the show. If you got a few bucks to support the stream, we appreciate it. But if not, we're we totally understand and are stoked to have you here. On behalf of myself, Bryce, Aiden, and our producer, Nick, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank all our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on Best of the West. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.